Hi, I'm Ben from Internetchi. In this short video, we're going to learn how to inspect the exterior of a house. Now, according to the standards of practice, a home inspector is required to inspect several things related to the exterior of the house. And the standards of practice is located online at natchiorg slash SOP. And if we go there, you'll see the standards of practice and there's an exterior section and it reads, the inspector shall inspect the exterior wall covering materials. That makes sense on the outside. What covers the building envelope? The inspector shall inspect the eaves, soffit, and fascia. A representative number of windows, not all of them, can't inspect all of them during a home inspection. All of the exterior doors, the inspector shall inspect the flashing and trim, adjacent walkways and driveways, stairs, steps, stoops, stairways, and ramps, porches, patios, decks, balconies, and carports, railings, guards, and handrails, and vegetation, surface drainage, retaining walls, and the grading of the property where they may adversely affect the structure due to moisture intrusion. The inspector shall describe the type of exterior wall covering materials. That's pretty easy to do. And the inspector shall report as in need of correction any improper spacing between intermediate balusters, spindles, and rails. So that's what's required according to the standards of practice. The other URL is natchiorg slash education. And if you wanted to learn a little bit about how to inspect one of those systems or components of the exterior, like the deck, you can go to natchiorg slash education and in the search field, type in whatever you want to inspect. So I'll type in deck and it automatically pops up how to perform deck inspections. And there's a how to perform deck inspections video course. So there's resources at Internetchi's Education. The other URL is natchiorg slash catalog. And there you'll find Internetchi's accreditation. Internetchi is accredited as a post-secondary institution by the Accrediting Council for Continuing Education and Training, which is a national accrediting agency recognized by the U.S. Department of Education to provide tuition-free online training, examination, certification, and continuing education to InterNACHI members. InterNACHI is essentially an accredited college. To check your organization or your school's accreditation, go to ed.gov slash accreditation, and you type in uh, your favorite school. So how about um, InterNACHI? I typed in InterNACHI, and boom, the InterNACHI school pops up. InterNACHI School is essentially an accredited university for home inspectors. And InterNACHI School does not charge tuition to its students who are InterNACHI members. So let's inspect three houses, the exterior of three houses. Here's one here. And let's remember what the standards of practice requires us to do. Well, this is me coming down from my ladder. So this is a shot of the gutter. And from here on, I think of the rest of the house until I go inside as the exterior. So as I come down from inspecting the roof from my ladder or an advantage point, I'll take a look at the siding materials and there's the second floor windows. I can't get to all of the windows. I'm not required to inspect all of the windows, just a representative number of the windows and also hoods or vents I'm looking. So this could be a bathroom hood or a dryer exhaust, I'll try to pay attention to what I see and observe on the second floor and in the attic. I'm required to inspect flashing and trim, so I wanted to look at the top of windows and doors, look at the header flashing. There's metal flashing installed on top of all the windows here. And I want to see how rainwater, the runoff, is captured, controlled, diverted away from the house foundation. So here we have a downspout at the front left corner of the front porch, not diverting water away from the foundation of the house. So this is a minor defect. There's a grading away from the house. That's good. There's a fence in the way. Fences are not part of a home inspection, according to the standards of practice, but you may include them in your report. You may exceed the standards of practice. And we have an article written by legal counsel on how to exceed the standards of practice 
in a more uniform way for all of your clients. And there's the fence. There's the backyard. Another downspout. Rear left downspout is not diverting water away from the foundation. So as I inspect the exterior, I'm going to keep in mind what I may find on the interior side. So I'm going to look in this corner of the basement. It looks like a poured concrete foundation. I'll look for water intrusion. There's some personal items that are restricting and limiting my visual only inspection. I'll document them in my report. Also, when inspecting the exterior, you bump into other systems. So this is the air conditioning unit, and it's not level. It's actually tilted a lot from probably settlement of the dirt around the house. And this downspout is kind of scrunched in between the deck and the siding materials, and it too is not diverting water away from the house foundation. So that's a minor defect. Here's a fireplace, direct vent. This is the vent coming out of the back side of the fireplace, but it's within a couple feet of a window. So I want to make sure that we're not in any code violation here. So that's an openable window within 23 inches. I want to take a look at that. When you're performing a home inspection and you don't know, it's okay to say, I don't know, but I'll look it up and I'll get that information for you as soon as possible. So right here, I have the freedom to say, well, I'm not a code inspector, I'm just a home inspector, but I'll look this up since we're a little concerned about the proximity of the gas fireplace, direct vent, and the openable window. There's another fireplace on the other side of the house and it has a, a vent as well. And the flashing around it looks really good. And the overhang looks good. Remember the soffit, fascia, and eaves is a requirement in the standards of practice. I'm required to also describe the type of wall covering material. And this house is covered with vinyl, vinyl siding. And the vinyl siding looks good. Here's the front porch, poured concrete front porch. A little bit of minor patching in the front. I'm not really concerned about it. I'll point it out as a cosmetic issue. A cosmetic defect is a, a superficial blemish or, or flaw. And we have a stone, a fake stone application. Man-made stone is applied to the house. So that's another type of wall covering material, exterior wall covering material being described in my report with pictures and text. Here's an egress door or an exterior door. The trim around it looks good. The flashing at the top looks good. The sealant around this pipe coming through the vinyl siding should be sealed up. Um, it, it's missing. The sealant is missing. So we don't want little critters to walk in through that opening. We don't want water intrusion to come through. And that's discharging away from the house foundation. So I know that there's a sump pump on the outside. Things on the outside, while I'm expecting the exterior, I'm going to um, anticipate when I go on the inside of the house. Remember the hood of the exhaust from a bathroom or a dryer, I'm not sure, that we saw earlier. I have to keep that in mind. Here's a sump pump discharge. The air conditioner was off level. So a, a house is a system of interdependent parts where one part affects many others. So this is a, a picture of an inspection image of a dryer exhaust or maybe a bathroom exhaust termination. High efficiency furnace is at the house, gas furnace. And I can see the intake in the exhaust. And that's probably the third thing is probably um, the exhaust of the hot water tank. But I'll keep that all in reserve until I go inside. Taking a look, indeed that is a vent. I'm not sure if it's a bathroom or a dryer. Um, if it's a dryer exhaust, um, I may recommend this to be replaced with something like a hood where there's a damper. Um, these louvers tend to age, warp, and then get stuck and then get clogged. So this is a nice bathroom exhaust termination, but it's not very good for a dryer. And there's some flashing rubber sealant this is a, a basement door, steel doors going down to the basement. 
All receptacles on the outside need to be GFCI protected. So I'll have one of these. This is my exterior, main exterior tool. It's a GFCI tester. And here's the other tool, screwdriver. So you can probe around. Now where a deck attaches to the house, I'm gonna look for ledger board flashing details. Look at the slider door here. Look at the fastening of the deck or stairs to the house. Looks like this step is curled up a little bit. So it's a potential trip hazard. Some of the steps are curled. They need to be refastened. The nails are starting to withdraw from the ledger board as well. And you can't have nails in the ledger board. So I like this half inch bolts or lag screws. And ledger, um, the floor joists are attached with joist hangers and fasteners. Two more exhaust hood terminations. Hmm. So that's four in my head. I have to figure out what is going on. And maybe I can't. Maybe on the inside, the exterior things are not evident. And that's okay. It's a visual only inspection. It's not exhaustive. Found a pipe on the outside in the backyard. I'm not sure what it is. I saw the sump pump discharge pipe. I don't know what this is. Maybe a drainage pipe. I'll put it in the report as a question for my client to ask the homeowner. From afar, the exterior looks good. Up close, there are some defects. That air conditioner needs to be leveled off. The structure of the deck looks good. I think they added just before I came, those big bolts all over the place. So everywhere there were nails fastening the structural components of the deck to the house, um, they added lag screws and bolts and through bolts. So this isn't built mm, the way I would like it with a ledger board or a beam resting on the post with a cut, with a ledge. But I'll let it go. This is a ramp. And in the interior course, you can learn about ramps and steps and stairways and the slope of the ramp and the handrail. Remember, we're not code inspectors, but this is a ramp and there should be a landing at the top and a landing at the bottom of the ramp. I'm also looking for steps. You can't have a very large step like this. So this is a trip hazard. And I'll use my fingers like that to show that the step is too large. I also look at the driveways and walkways. The driveway's asphalt looks in pretty good shape. Looking for cracks, signs of puddling, depressions. Minor hairline crack, I think from settlement, that's okay. No wood rot at the bottom of the doors or windows. So when I inspect a door, I'll look at the bottom left, bottom right, top right, top left, that counterclockwise rotation, always. It's a pattern in my inspection process. I go through a pattern, I inspect the exterior in the same way. Actually, I approach the front from afar and then I move up and then I move around the house in a counterclockwise fashion. I'll even do the interior rooms in that way, counterclockwise. I'll inspect a window in that way, counterclockwise, with the bottom left being first, bottom left, bottom right, top right, top left. The exterior receptacles are GFCI protected, that's good. The posts look good. Now, where there is a, a standing surface, a walking surface that's more than 30 inches above the, the ground, um, a fall from that could cause a, a serious injury. So a guard is recommended just for safety. And I'm doing the exterior, but I bump into the electrical. There's the electrical system, meter, line, service line, grounding, rod, phone, cable. There's the gas line going in, and that needs sealed there. Yep. And there's the underground buried tank for the propane. There's the gallons. There's the controls. All exterior water faucets in this climate, cold climate, should be frost proof so they don't freeze in the wintertime. House number two. Let's take a look at the exterior of this house. Now, the exterior is everything on the outside. Well, when I'm on the roof, I'm looking at everything that I can from those vantage points and I bump into things like this. So this cupola is part of the exterior. That's where I put it in my report. And this cupola is, well, there's a lot of problems. There's some, there's a lot of wood rot there. 
Don't worry about damaging something that's already damaged. Don't worry about revealing something and communicating that when it's already rotten. So this is already rotten. You can see I'm pulling rotten pieces out of the cupola itself. I'm not worried about it. In fact, that's your job. If you do damage to a home, don't worry. That is your job. And we have an article um, in our online library of inspection articles about what happens when a home inspector does damage to a home. You should read that. Ventilation, I can see from the outside, the exterior inspection includes other components. So there's a gable vent. And flashing, I'm required to inspect the flashing according to the exterior section of the home inspection standards of practice. So while I'm there, I'm gonna take a look at the flashing. The step flashing is actually missing. They didn't install it with the second layer of shingles. They really should have. Now water can travel underneath in between the top layer and the original layer. The wood siding looks good, the paint looks good. Downspouts are diverting water far away from the house foundation. I'm missing a gutter strap. This little roof section over this bump out window area has a lot of silicone, white sealant and black sealant. The flashing is missing. They must have a problem. So I'm going to remember this when I go on the inside and take a look up with my infrared camera and moisture meter because white silicone is a, a band-aid fix for something. There's a really long discharge pipe coming out, probably from a sump pump. It's open, so it should be sealed up. I like to crawl underneath things if I can. I'm gonna take a look at that basement window there. Hopefully it's not an egress window, because that would be hazardous. Dense vegetation, I'll take a look. Window wells, I'll take a look. The grading and slope I want to pay attention to, the landscaping, the site, the environment. Looks like we have some trees coming in contact with the roof. Some dents in the aluminum siding here. It's old siding. So you're going to have some cosmetic issues, like little bumps, holes, things like that. I think they replaced the old wooden shutters with these plastic ones. The plastic ones are narrow. They're fake. Maybe the original ones were actually functional shutters. So it's not going to match up. You're going to have some patching here. The different kinds of exterior siding. So aluminum, but vertical. There's my money shot. You get up, put your inspection vehicle in the report. And the driveway looks really good. It just rained. So that's kind of like, for me as a home inspector, an ideal time to inspect the exterior. Because I'm looking for standing water, puddles, drainage problems, flashing problems that may allow bulk water to enter the house. There's some wood rot at the bottom of trim near the garage door. I just use my screwdriver, tap it, try to listen to how it sounds. If it sounds like a thud, it could be rotten. So I'll probe it with a moisture meter to make sure. Here's some steps at the exterior door. It's not the egress door. It doesn't matter. It's still a trip hazard. The storm door opens over the steps. That's OK. The door itself should not in this case and the step is too high. There's a dryer vent hood. So the other hoods must be from, well, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see on the inside. There's some capping on the old wooden trim boards of the windows. We got a loose downspout strap. Looks like that's a kitchen hood. Exterior siding looks okay. There's a spotlight there. Still looking at the capping because wherever there's capping, especially on an older ex existing home, the capping may be hiding something like wood rot. They capped it to make it look nice, but maybe to protect the structural components too, or the components of the wood wooden um, window frame. But no one has seen it for a long time, right? And maybe water somehow got underneath the capping. It looks good on the outside, but when you squeeze the capping, you can hear like crunchy materials. Maybe. So I like to grab things and squeeze them. Like I like to grab um, a soft brass chrome plated trap and squeeze it a little bit. If it breaks in my hand, that's okay. If this squishes and I go right through the capping maybe and open it up and find wood rot, that's okay. So there's the underside. It's not pressure treated. So a lot of this wood is rotten actually. That bottom is rotten and that corner that load bearing corner of this entire deck is resting on a CMU concrete masonry unit and it's in the wrong direction 
and it's not even correctly done. It's not secure and it could collapse. It could actually break under some weight there. So it's not installed properly. It shouldn't have been installed like that. That's a structural defect. Major defect, we need a contractor to come and help us. And we've got wood rot all over the place. The ends of the deck floorboards are rotten. The posts, load-bearing components are rotten. That's my finger going through a load-bearing post. That's a step with wood rot at the end. These are not pressure-treated pieces of wood. There's a post at the corner and it's leaning because there's wood rot above this post on the load-bearing floor joists at the ends. There's my screwdriver going through the rotten components at the corner load-bearing component and it's leaning over. Another defect there with the concrete masonry unit. The railing isn't any good because it's rotten in some areas. My screwdriver goes right through some of the floorboards, just like that. Now when my screwdriver goes through a floorboard like that, I'll take a picture of it and put that in the report. I'm not hiding anything. If my screwdriver goes through, it's not my fault. Right? My screwdriver is used to test for wood rot, and a successful test for wood rot is when my screwdriver goes through that board. So I'm not hiding anything. I didn't cause that damage. I'm just revealing it. So I'll put that picture right in my report. Many more pictures of wood rot, just like that. And like that. My hand almost went through. Okay, some other trim boards up. Exterior water faucets should be frost proof. This is in Pennsylvania, a cold climate, and it's not. So in the winter time, um, that could freeze and burst. Lots more wood rot all over the place. I'm concerned here because this is um, a thin layer of concrete or mortar or cement that was poured on top of a rotten piece of wood that is at the sill, the tread plate of a slider door. So we are now getting really close to having an open water entry point for moisture to in enter the house um, at the slider door, um, which is a common area to look for water intrusion. And so I'm going to remember this and look at the um, band rim joist and floor joist ends and the, the subfloor structure underneath the slider door in this area from within the basement or crawl space. Exterior receptacles. I want a nice cover on there. That's not an exterior cover. Old air conditioner unit. Natural gas supplied and it's off. Electric meter. Water could penetrate behind the meter itself and actually it has and I can push back on the siding and see that there's some structural damage. Um, there's a piece of plywood that's rotten behind the electrical meter. Where two dissimilar metal, um, sorry, dissimilar materials meet during an exterior inspection, I'm going to look for separation. I'm going to see how those two are meeting, flashed or sealed or overlapping or in a shingle-like manner to divert water away. And this has been patched up with so much silicone and paint that um, there might be a concern here. Maybe the chimney has separated slightly and settled slightly, which is okay, but it has caused the homeowner to keep gooping in a lot of sealant and silicone, which is just a, a temporary patch, if not done well. There's a vent there for the porch roof with some wood rot, but the vent is partially painted over. And some minor imperfections. Someone tried to correct some settling or some, some cracking of the front porch with a thin layer of cement, which never lasts. So it's a cosmetic issue right now. And some indications of cracking and settlement of the front porch from the required egress door tread step, but that's okay. And waterproof faucets are required. We're missing a small uh, component at the top of the light fixture. And the very old windows in this old existing home have cracking um, window putty. 
Okay, let's go to the third house. Third and last house. And this is a townhouse. So there aren't any sides. It's, um, it's not an end unit. It's right in the middle of the row. Starting from where the gutter ends. Oh, the tree in the front yard is in contact with the roof and the gutter and the structure itself. So that needs to be trimmed. There's missing flashing called kickout flashing at the corner where that inside corner is above the black railing. Above that black railing, you can see stains, and that's because of the missing kickout flashing. It's allowing water to miss the gutter, and it could be causing problems with the stucco. And I saw that from an advantage point at the top of my ladder. The eaves, soffit, and fascia I'm going to take a look at. The railing I'm going to take a look at. Here's my ladder. Walks, steps, stoops. We're required to inspect those. Could be part of a homeowners association, but I'm going to inform my client of anything that I find, especially a trip hazard. Take a picture of my truck. There it is in the parking lot. And we'll go upstairs to this deck. And the structural components of the deck from underneath look pretty good. This is the front um, of the house, which is which starts on the second floor. The entry door, egress door is on the second floor. So you go up on this deck and the deck looks good. And there's a light at the top of the stairs, illuminating the stairs going up. The landing, now the railing is loose, completely loose. It's not even fastened, very loose. It's supposed to hold 200 pounds in any direction, that railing, that guard. And the intermediate spindles, well, they're attached to the guard. So that's a safety hazard there. All exterior receptacles need to be GFCI protected. A little damage at the front window. Maybe somebody bumped into it. Torn screen, very minor stuff. The handle locking mechanism of the front storm door doesn't work. I label that as a minor defect. The downspouts are diverting water away from the house. Some wood rot at the front um, window shutter feature. Some minor cracking of some masonry could be patched up. We have a missing piece of glass at the light fixture at the stairs. And it looks like there was a closet roof leak. So the closet is separated from the exterior. There's a little like walk-in closet and there was a roof leak in the past, not now. The light bulb didn't turn on, but I confirmed with my voltage tester that there was electricity and the switch worked. There's that little closet. So this is the rear deck. The rear deck has a closet. You walk out from the slider door from the living room, walk out onto the rear deck, second floor. Um, I see that there's an air conditioning unit or heat pump and a closet on the other side. The railing is a little loose. I'm wiggling it with my hand and it's actually separated. So the railing is separated from its, the fastening is actually exposed. It's pulled out from the wall. So this is a major defect. We need a contractor to come out. A minor defect is like a, a dirty air filter. The homeowner can do it. When you have to hire a contractor to fix the railing, um, that's a major defect. And a material defect is something that is um, um, eminent and it's going to um, hurt someone pose an unreasonable risk to someone's life or have an adverse um, impact on the value of the home. So something really major is a material defect. Soffit looks good. I think they had a grill there. That's why th that's all black. Um, that's the underside of the porch. So it shouldn't be like dirty. So it must've been a grill. There's a little bit of cracking as if the deck floor structure settled a little bit. And that's where that railing pulled off too. That's interesting. Slider door, slider door. All exterior receptacles are GFCI protected. There's that missing light fixture again. There's the heat pump, and it is tucked in there, and there's not a lot of clearance around it. So that's a bit of a restriction. I don't think it can be fixed. I'm just going to put it in the report as my observation. Ideally, we want some clearance all around that unit. There's a lot of air movement around there. And it's so dirty, it's probably an indication of delayed maintenance. Now I'm on the grounds in the rear yard behind the townhouse. We already inspected the second floor deck from the living room and slider with the closet and the air conditioning unit, heat pump. Now I'm gonna look at the exterior from the outside. And there's the, the main beam that holds the second floor deck that we were just on, and it's capped. You know, we just went over capping. Looks good on the outside, but sometimes it could be covering up something. and the. The homeowner doesn't even know, or they're totally unaware 
that there could be something underneath the capping because of water intrusion be underneath the capping and destroying water destroys could have destroyed some wood there and this is a load bearing beam so i'm going to take a little extra time and see if this is okay i'm going to kind of push on it maybe peel off something without popping the fasteners see if i can see what's underneath the capping the floor joists look good all pressure treated attached to the structure really well looking really good the ledger board flashed fastened but i pulled off some of the capping off that main beam. And sure enough, wood rot, a lot of it. In fact, so much that I deemed it to be a material defect, as if this deck was going to collapse. If we had a party on there, I bet we can get that beam to collapse the entire deck. It was so rotten, I put my hand underneath the capping. I, I decided to bend the capping, it was so bad, because I needed to reveal this to the current homeowner. I went back to the slider door that goes to the second floor deck, um, deck and I tagged it to not open, to don't open the slider and don't go on the deck. And I informed the homeowner through their real estate agent. My client was with me. Obviously, this needs to be fixed if they're going to buy the home, but every home should be inspected every year. And hiring a home inspector should be part of a homeowner's routine home maintenance plan. The homeowner had no idea this was a defect, right? And without hiring a certified home inspector, I'm not sure how a homeowner could maintain their home without one. So InterNACHI believes that every homeowner should hire a certified professional inspector to inspect their home as part of a homeowner's routine maintenance plan, an annual checkup on the home. And one of the things a home inspector can do is um, make an assumption that there might be something wrong underneath that capping. And good thing I did. There's a good picture. Totally rotten. Not termite infestation, not carpenter ants, just wood rot. And no one knew it until they had a home inspector take a look. There you go. And it was just falling off like that in my hand. That's a material defect. It's very rare. Most homes don't have major problems, but some do. And that's why every home needs to be inspected, especially the exterior. Remember all those vents? Well, one of the vents in this townhouse was venting into the into the attic, and that's the dryer exhaust. So it was terminating into the attic, and all that gray stuff is lint. So I didn't see in this townhouse any exterior hoods. The bathroom hoods were going up to the ridge vent from the attic. Ideally, they would terminate outside. All bath exhaust should go outside. All dryer exhaust should go outside, and this one wasn't. So when you're doing the exterior, if you can remember, where is everything terminating? Well, the dryer was terminating in this attic. And that's not good either. That's a major defect. Okay, I want to leave you with the two URLs, nachi.org slash education. That's where all of the accredited courses are, accredited by the U.S. Department of Education and a group in Canada. And InterNACHI is essentially um, a university, a tuition-free university for home inspectors. And all of our courses, online courses, are accredited by the U.S. Department of Education. Um, and the other URL is natchiorg slash catalog, and that's where you'll find the accreditations that InterNACHI enjoys and provides to its members for free. All right, everybody, I'm Ben. Hope you had fun inspecting the exterior of a house.